This question is going to blow your mind. We have a triangle whose perimeter is given to us, which is 84 units, and the sides of this triangle are x raised to 1 over 10, x raised to 1 over 15, and x raised to 1 over 30. Using only this much information, can you find the value of x? Okay, we know that the perimeter of a triangle is just the sum of all its sides. Since the perimeter is already given as 84, we can set up an equation by adding all the sides together and making it equal to 84. So, x raised to 1 over 10 plus x raised to 1 over 15 plus x raised to 1 over 30 is equal to 84. Now, we need to simplify this equation. The best way to handle different exponents like 1 over 10, 1 over 15, and 1 over 30 is to find a common denominator. The least common multiple of 10, 15, and 30 is 30. So we will rewrite each exponent with a denominator of 30. x raised to 1 over 10 can be written as x raised to 3 over 30, because 1 over 10 is the same as 3 over 30. Similarly, x raised to 1 over 15 can be written as x raised to 2 over 30. The last term, x raised to 1 over 30, stays the same, equals 84. Next, we observe that all these powers of x have the denominator 30, which makes it easier to group them. Just keep this power rule in mind. We have a raised to m, whole raised to n equals a raised to n, whole raised to m. Both of them are also equal to a raised to m times n. Great. Now, x raised to 3 over 30 can be written as x raised to 1 over 30 whole raised to 3. Similarly, x raised to 2 over 30 can be rewritten as x raised to 1 over 30 whole raised to 2. And x raised to 1 over 30 remains the same. Now, let's introduce a new variable to make things simpler. Let's say y is equal to x raised to 1 over 30. This means we can replace x raised to 1 over 30 with y. Substituting this into our equation, we get y raised to 3 plus y raised to 2 plus y equals 84. This is a cubic equation, and now we need to solve for y. Notice that 84 can be written as 64 plus 16 plus 4. This is useful because 64 is 4 raised to 3. 16 is 4 raised to 2. And 4 is just 4. This suggests that 4 might be a root of our equation. Now take all of them to the left-hand side of the equation. Now we can rearrange the terms. The first group, y raised to 3 minus 4 cube, is a difference of cubes, and we can use this formula to factor the difference of cubes. So, using a as y and b as 4, we can factor this as y minus 4 multiplied by y squared plus 4y plus 4 square, or 16. The second group is a difference of squares, and we can use this famous formula to factor the difference of square. Using a as y and b as 4, we can factor this as y minus 4 multiplied by y plus 4. The last term, y minus 4, is already in factored form. Now we factor out y minus 4 from all terms. This gives us y minus 4 multiplied by y squared plus 4y plus 16 plus, from here we get y plus 4, and from here we get 1, and this equals 0. Or it will be y minus 4 times y squared plus 5y plus 21. Solving the first part, y minus 4 equals 0, we get y equals 4. Now let's solve the second part, y squared plus 5, y plus 21 equals 0. This is a quadratic equation. To determine if it has real solutions, we use the discriminant formula, which is b squared minus 4 times a times c. Here, a is 1, b is 5, and c is 21. First, we calculate 5 squared, which is 25. Then, 
we compute 4 times 1 times 21, which is 84. Now, we subtract 25 minus 84, which gives us minus 59. Since the discriminant is negative, this quadratic equation has no real solutions. This means the only real solution to our original equation is y equals 4. Since we earlier defined y as x raised to 1 over 30, we now know that x raised to 1 over 30 equals 4. To find x, we raise both sides to the power of 30, giving us x equals 4 raised to 30. And that's it. This is our final answer, which is a very large number. By the way, can you let me know in the comments whether or not such a triangle is possible? Use this theorem. This question was super crazy. So good.